be cruising down the highway in our in our uh, dragster. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Actually, it's more like. And just because it's a T column, if you crash, you get instantly speared on the column. That's awesome. Safety third. Hey guys, welcome back to the Quick Speed Shop. We're working on the Death Trap Rail Dragster today. I think today we're going to do some uh, body work and roll cage action, or, well, roll bar action anyways. And it's Daytona 500 today. I'm watching the 500 on Fox over there on the TV in the garage, so i got to have to pay attention to that. But we're going to build race car stuff while we're watching race car stuff. That seems like a good thing to do. Catch you up here if you haven't seen this before. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Leave a like, leave a comment. And what we're building is a complete period correct, mostly with old parts, um, 1950s rail style dragster. I'm going for like 1956 time frame when it was right on the edge of going from homemade dragsters to uh, like tube frame uh, Don Garlet style dragsters. So I've built this out of all old Ford parts that I had laying around. A dropped and windowed Model A front axle, uh, Model T frame stretched, uh, split wishbones 36. Super rare, early 36 wide 5 drums, 37 wide 5 wheels. It's got a nail head. I'm going to pretend it's a 322, but it's actually a 62401. 325 horsepower, 450 foot-pounds of torque. Way too much for this Death Trap Dragster. Perfect. Dynaflow transmission. It's got 8-inch forward rear end, but it's drilled for Chevy pattern. I got 56 Chevy wheels with... Original retried white wall slicks from Alex Tire in Rochester, New York. Put a little floor pan in here, so I got a place for my feet. I welded up the world's shortest drive shaft last time, and that's uh, got the whole drivetrain all hooked together now. I put the Rochester 4-Jet carburetor back on it. I got a cool scoop that's going to go on that when we get there. I got to put a water pump and fuel pump on it eventually. I've got my side steer steering arm hooked up here. Uh, last time I dropped the steering arms to clear the the dropped axle. This guy's steering good. The bushings are a little worn, but it's good enough for what we're doing. So today, I want to come back here over the panel truck seat. I've got a bunch of this inch and a quarter, inch and a half, inch and a quarter, I think, tubing. We're going to build a super simple hoop over the seat, get some down bars. Uh, eventually, uh, there's going to be some tin work on here, and there's going to be some kind of cowl bar to hang the steering box on. So I think we'll start at the back with the, the hoop. I want to do an old style one where, you know, none of these guys back in the day in the 50s had pipe benders. They had, a lot of times they used black iron pipe to make these things. I'm going to go a little bit one step newer than that and have some welded tubing. But I'm going to do it like I saw Don Garlitz, his original, like, uh, Model A framed dragster. His first one had like a a roll bar and actually it was ahead of the driver it was like up by the steering column i'm gonna put mine behind the seat but it comes up and then it like goes 30 degrees and 60 and over and it's kind of just welded together pipe so we're going to do that a lot of this inch and a quarter inch and a half whatever it is pipe and uh obviously this thing isn't safe for racing the tires are all super dry rotted all the way around this is a display piece i'm going to be at the buffalo motorama at the buffalo convention center March 24th to the 26th of this year, 2023. So if you want to see the car in person, it'll be there. And I'll, I'll be there most of the time. I'll have some stickers and stuff if you want to stop by. But we're going with like a display hot rod for the uh, hot rod rail for the open wheel room. So it's going to run and drive and function. Hopefully, I want to be able to run and drive it, but it will not be safe for AC. Okay, I think we'll start off with taking a measurement and seeing that. Boom, where I come in the seat. This thing's actually pretty comfortable. This panel truck seat, this is a panel truck seat from the 40s. And it actually uh, holds me really good. I'm sitting on a little pad here. And I just put my floor pan in, so now I can put my feet where they're gonna go. It's gonna be sitting pretty much like this. I got a cool lap belt later. I got a World War II aircraft lap belt, which all these guys would have run for seat belts. Back in the day would have been uh, aircraft stuff left over from World War II. So I found one of those. My friend Dylan had one. So that'll be here. And uh, I just want the roll bar pretty much just a little bit up over my head. And then, uh, oh, hold on, there's a crash. Oh, I got to pay attention. All right, anyways, just want to get a measurement of what we got off the frame. Boom. 
And let's see, right over my head, so the hoop. I think I would make the first pieces, it's this three foot. And then, yeah, we'll do something like that. Yeah, three foot and then make maybe like a foot piece at a 30 degree angle. And then, yeah, I like that. So I'm gonna say, we'll start at three feet. We'll go from there. So let me uh, saw two pieces of tubing, three feet. We'll check it out. All right, step number one, I cut my pipe to three foot and I cut a 30 degree angle on top. And I've clamped this uh, bar to the seat so I can get a dimension. Um, and I leveled out, I used the level to find plumb and I marked the bar so now I know where to hold the tube. What I want, just wanna do is I'm gonna tack it on the bottom right quick and Right about there is where my 30 degree is. I'm just gonna tack it in place, holding it on my, my true line, my plumb line. I'm just gonna start putting this guy together in place. Ow! That was a piece of metal into my hand. It's just like bad Chad, we're gonna build her on the fly. All right. So that's one. Come over here, get this guy tacked up on. Get my, uh, my 30 degree angle dangle there, there we go. This is awesome. So just how they do it in the real world, ish. Boom! Look at that. Should I leave it like stacks? Oh no! I gotta take my burn a hole in my seat pad. I can't do that. That's not for this car. It's for my Dodge truck. Just using it here. All right, we got that tacked up. Let me go out, walk up front and take a look. I'm gonna eyeball down the center. But I think it's gonna be okay, because it should be plumb. Oh, that's awesome. I see the problem. I put this pipe inboard too much. That's why we tack it, so we can snap, snap it off and try it again. I've been using my uh, Ensley saw I bought for a hundred bucks at a, a swap meet. The thing is awesome. I got to set to 30 degrees and uh, I backed the measurement off. I set a foot, I'm going to go eight inches because it was going to make the center of the hoop too small. I probably should have done like 45s on the bar, but it is what it is now. We got it. It's going to be special. Boom! Look at that! Oh, let's see here. Hmm. That was a mistake, I think. I think this would really look better with more angle of the dangle. I went to my 45 degree angle. Turned. I went the wrong way first. I needed to pull 15 on this side to go to 30 to make a 45. And that gets me a top piece. The 45s on the upper tubing didn't line up, so I got a little piece of uh, EMT conduit, which is also old school race car action. Unsafe at any speed. And I was able to mush the end down to an oval and make it matches perfectly here from my upper link. So I'm just going to tack this and we're going to have a look at it here. Hold on. It's 
This is going to be awesome. Bam. Look at that. Wonder how uh level we are. Man, that's like just about right on the money. Let me step back and get an eyeball from the front of the car. Oh yeah, that's great. All right, bam, check it out. This is the body panel I'm gonna be using. And let me go over here and I'll show you. This is the back half of a doctor's coupe, like I said. And the trunk lid was there. The back of the body curved down. And if you look up uh, 1922 Model T doctor's coupe, you'll see what it was. But I bought this whole trunk, the deck lid, the rear pan, these side pieces uh, at an estate sale. I took it to Hershey, Pennsylvania to try to sell it at the AECA meet multiple years. And nobody wanted... Uh, it's only a couple of your body style, and it's a pretty cheap car that a lot of people don't restore them. So, bam, we're going to turn this into the body for the dragster because it's got super cool patina, and it's going to look like continuing my Model T theme, like somebody went to a junkyard and got all the T parts in a nail head and put a dragster together. So it's got a cool shape. If I put the body on backwards, it's got a cutout where I can get in back there, and then uh, it'll sit up here. So I've marked out a notch for the axle. I'm about ready to drill it out with a hole saw and just cut it on there and then we'll get this down. I'll do them both right quick and then we'll clamp this the tin to the side of the body here and take a look at it. But it's going to make a neat little body for the dragster. Right, check this out. Ah. This is uh, super tight already. <laughs> Boom. How does this body look? Got my wheel here. I've got a piece of old uh, aluminum. I think I'm gonna make aluminum hood for this hood topper here, but I can't have the steering wheel down. Well, actually, I could if it's way back here, but then I don't think I'll be able to get in and out. I got a T wheel here. I'm gonna use a T wheel. It kind of lurks out with the cuts here, like right at the rear end, and you know, kind of like wind foil, and then you're back here, the tires. I'm gonna have, I'm thinking I'm making make a down bar that's gonna come right through and the body can attach to it. Like have an up bar and a cross here and have a, a bar come right off the roll bar right through there. But how cool is this, huh? Bam. And there's gonna be a, a real tight drive shaft tunnel. I'm just gonna form that up and over and bolt it right to the floor. Just uh, like 16 gauge sheet metal and probably run some reinforcements on it just to keep, you know, the drive shaft from coming and exploding into me. That'd be bad. But this is, this is coming out. This is super trick. I think it's going to be awesome. I got the rear panel for the deck lid here, which I can shorten up. Like it's still got the original wood and latch and all that. It's, this was all nailed together into wood. That's how old this is, 101 years old. But it's got the right curve. I can zip it and uh, just tack weld it back together. Trim this down to fit over the transmission. Okay, so I jumped ahead just a little bit here. I did some thinking and fabbing and a bunch of like cutting and fitting. But I've ended up framing out the body with the tubing and I've got it tied into the frame here. Everything's just tacked, but it's uh, gonna be strong. So I got this front tube. I'm gonna put another tube about here. Then I can hang my steering box off it. Then back in here where I'm gonna get my legs under, I think I wanna put a kick up in the pipe, bend it in my pipe tubing bender or pipe bender, that cheap Harbor Freight bender I got. Put a kick in it. That way it'll give me some more room to get in the car and there's room for the steering column. Then I'll make that aluminum hood up and over, kind of like how it is. This sheet metal will probably like pop rivet on or something, and then the aluminum will pop rivet on too. I'm going to leave this open here so you can see the action, just because that's how it is. It's kind of cool. Like you can see 
the body work is just for like aerodynamics and to keep the front of the tires covered, I guess. That's kind of what I'm thinking, but I'll leave this open here. So yeah, I like it. Let me uh, climb in here, put you on the stand. I'll climb in and we can take a look. So I haven't figured out how the best way to get in yet is, I guess maybe st oh, step on the tire and then step on the seat. And then get down in it, get down in it. Where's my steering wheel? I can't reach it, but yeah. This will be framed out nice. This is not too bad. For my arms, I can be down inside the body. Hold the steering wheel like this. Like I said, if I put this piece, put a bow in it, put the steering column up so the wheel can be up here. I'm going to have a manual uh, handbrake, which will probably be maybe, maybe even outside the body. I'll probably be on the inside. The lever sticking up. So I'm going to probably stop the body work about here. I'll have this pipe. Maybe I'll have the pipe exposed. I don't know. The pipe's going to be back here, but I need some room to be able to function. I'll put it somewhere I can grab it. Maybe put the master cylinder by my right leg and then put the handle right here so you can pull back on it. Um, I think it's going to have a foot throttle. I'll probably have the shifter for the transmissions on the driver's side here. I'll probably have some kind of lever just so you can pull it out of park and put it back in park under the sheet metal. And then my left foot will just kind of ride. I am actually think you can race this thing now. No, we can't. Too dangerous. The body's kind of like flush to the top of the tires. That's pretty neat. And it's just kind of, it's all kind of just working out. I like had a real general idea how I wanted to do this. And, you know, had all the pieces. I've, I wanted to, ever since I got these slicks and stuff, I wanted to have, <laughs> build one of these dragsters. And then I had this nail head that I dug out and basically gathered parts and pieces and just had all the pieces laying around it's like bam i want to put this together for the buffalo motorama so it's going to be cool i'm actually going to take it to the syracuse nationals on a trailer i'm going to build a an old 50 style trailer they used to call them frail trailers and basically we're like two channels you drive the the, the race car the dragster the dry lakes guys started it you drive the roadster or the dragster just onto these two channels and there was a single axle in the center and that you'd tow it with your car. So I'm going to build a frail trailer to haul this to the Syracuse Nationals this year. I'll have it behind my Studebaker truck. That should make a really neat display and uh, cool. But yeah, this is uh, this is race car -y stuff. I feel race car -y. So this, let's see, which way is return of the wheel to the right? The bot. The pitman arm pulls back, which would pull back on that, which would steer to the right. So the box is going to mount like this. See, it's it's got this flange on here. I'm thinking, you know, I weld some tabs right to my tube. Oop. You know, however, however it lays out, and then this will mount right here. The shaft will come through. I'll put my left foot under the shaft. The shaft will poke out the side of the bodywork and then run to a uh, an arm on the side of the body and then run a real long drag link all the way up there. But this this will work. All right, so next night I've got the steering box tacked in place. I took a random steel plate I had I like to buy these weird shaped cutoffs at the scrapyard or at the steel place just when they see them there. And uh, right, I got to trim a bunch of tails off of it, but I've got it hole sawed. It's tacked onto the tube here. I'm going to add a, a gusset over here somehow to support the box here. But it's got three bolts, and then I'm going to run some another tube and tie in here on the back of this, double this up. I got to cut the top of this off, but somehow I'll tie in over here. I've also shortened up the steering column shaft, and I uh, got to figure out. I'm gonna have to machine a piece, or have somebody machine a piece to slip in there, and then slip in this T part. But essentially, it'll weld back together there, and it gives me room to sit under the wheel. The column, as you can see, is coming up above the top of the body. Uh, like I said, it's gonna have a crown to it, so I'm gonna bend up a tube to go from here up and over. And I'll have some kind of mount. I might even just weld uh, this spring here is like a pivot 
springless would have had a sheet metal column over it. I might put like a collar over this and then just weld it to this tube so it can it can roll in this spring, kind of like a bushing, and then it'll it'll mount this upper end here of the wheel. There's not a lot of force on it, so that'd probably be fine. Or I might, well, you know what I could do. Hold on a minute. I'm thinking I could sleeve a put a tube back on it. Oh, it's still need some kind of bushing. I could machine like a plastic bushing to go inside a tube, and then a tube could like clamp to the pipe. Oh, uh, whatever. I that's fine. I can leave that shaft just like that. But I'll either do that, or maybe I can find a bearing to fit on this. But I'll mount the upper end of it. But that's there. I've got to extend the steering arm through here. Um, what I'm probably going to do is take the nut off, slide a piece of tubing up, clean all the, cl grind all this out, clean it all up. I'll probably just at weld a piece of heavy wall tubing right to this, which is not safe for actual drag racing or street usage, but for this dragster, it's going to be fine. And weld a piece of heavy wall tubing right to the splines and the nut here, weld it real hot and good right through the side and then I'll have like a round disc with a couple of bolts and I'll bolt it on my steering arm, I'll bolt onto this and then I'll steer it that way. Well, let me say once again before I get all the people in the comments, you can't just weld onto a steering box shaft like that and then go out and run on the street. This is a primary, primarily a display dragster that's just going to fire up on a trailer and then drive around the yard. It's not for drag racing, not for street driving, so don't ever do this. Don't ever weld on a steering box like that in the real world, but for what I'm doing, I just got to get parts together and make it steer. It's it's going to be fine for what I'm doing, but not on a drag strip or on the street. That's a no-no. You didn't see it here at the Quick Speed Shop. All right, bam, it's next night. I've done a little more fabbing, and I'm about to run out of MIG gas, so we're going to have to work quick, but check it out. I put made the upper tube here. I used my cheapo uh, Harbor Freight bender, which is about useless for anything besides basically just putting a little hump in the tubing, but as you can see it's got a curve up to it. I got the top of the steering column mounted. I, uh, hold on, I almost lost my steering wheel. Ah, there we go. I, uh, had this, like, picking eye that came off a piece of machinery, and this shaft is 7 8 and I was looking for some Deleron plastic or something to make a bushing. Turns out the inside of this is just about 7 8 it's like a couple thousandths bigger, so I stuck it in there, and, uh, it squeaks right now, but I'll just oil this up a little bit, but it it's only got a few thousandths play and it'll hold the steering column good enough. So I had this little homemade bracket I had for something else I tacked on here. This bolts on so I can unbolt it to remove the column from the welded part. So that's all good. We're all mounted up there. I've chopped the shaft down and we're getting ready to weld the steering wheel on. Uh, this box is four turns lock to lock, so I've got the shaft marked center throw. I got the T steering wheel, I got this little adapter shank piece that came from Speedway Motors, um, so you can adapt it onto any kind of steering shaft. It's bolted in here with a keyway, and I've ground down a 5 8 bolt. I'm going to weld here to the shaft, and then this is going to slip over here, and uh, I could plug weld through here, and plug weld into here, and weld it around. Um, for this, I'm sure it's, gonna, it's probably going to be fine just to weld the bolt in there, and then bring this up, and then weld it. I'll probably get good penetration, but I'll I'll probably drill, you know, I'll drill a hole in both just so I can get a plug weld through both of them that'll lock it right in. But this, uh, the T-wheel is going to go right on there. It's the perfect height for me. The only thing I'm trying to guess on, maybe you guys can answer, but you're not going to get time to do it because I'm going to weld it right now, is do I clock it straight up and down like a T, or do I take it like this, kind of like a dragster wheel, it's a little more comfortable to hold on to it that way, and it looks racy, but I kind of like it as like the stock T, how the T-wheel would have been as well. The only problem with that is if the steering is off, just, well, whatever, I can turn the wheels. I, I'm kind of thinking I'm going to weld it in there like that, but let's look at it again like this. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, uh, I like it better as the straight up and down like that, like the T-wheel. It looks like it's supposed to be that way. So uh, I'm on, I'm pegged on zero on my on my gas gauge, so we got a little bit left. If I crank down the pressure just a little bit, we'll cheat it. 
but I want to get this uh, welded up on here and then uh, also something that worked out fortuitous, fortuitous the piece of column I cut off is going to be the right diameter to thread on or well go on over this and I'm going to weld this shaft on here which you also don't want to go do like I explained before but we're going to poke this out the side and this is going to be the shaft for the uh, drag link to hook to for the tie rod. And I wonder if this needs some support because hmm yeah this might need some kind of support as well. Just gotta straighten her up here a little bit. That's way better. That's pretty much perfect like that. Now let's see if I can get in this thing. I'm developing the process. You stand on the axle shaft, stand on the axle shaft this way, grab the roll bar, get your legs in here, and just kind of slither down. Bam, look at that. Don't touch the steering column, it's hot. I'll put a little bit of grease on the on my pivot here, but oh yeah, that's nice. The there's more slop in this wheel with these old screws than there is anything, but oh yeah, that'll that'll steer like gangbusters, man. Be cruising down the highway in our in our uh, dragster. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Actually, it's more like. Bah, bah. And just because it's a T column, if you crash, you get instantly speared on the column. That's awesome. Safety third. Man, I'm getting excited now. I'm thinking about the shifter is on the driver's side, thinking about having like a, a rod down here that has like a lever. So you push, pull it, you know, push it in the park or pull it in the park, whatever, which way it works out down here like that. The brake is going to be over here. I'll probably mount the master cylinder down off this bar inside the body here and then I'll have like a lever a lever arm or maybe a bracket right here with the lever so you'd grab the pull back on the brake it would pivot right here on this bar and it would push in on the on the master cylinder so it would you know operate the brakes only rear brakes but it's all gonna be hard lined right right to here so that'll be good the master cylinder go right there Work, put the brakes on some kind of throttle. Your left, your left foot just kind of hangs out, I guess, and doesn't do nothing. Oh, I wonder if. Hold on a minute. What if I hooked up a left foot shifter where you shifted it with your foot, like pushed it in the park and like pulled it out, like grabbed it? That uh, might be a little dangerous. I better have a rod up here. Anyways, your left foot just kind of hangs out. Or actually. Would it make sense to have a left foot throttle because the linkage is on that side? I got a lot going on over here with the brake. What if I had a left foot throttle? Which would seem kind of counterintuitive, but you could... Uh... Oh, that's something to think about. Space is a final frontier in a dragster, so 
you got to be using all your hands and nowadays they got buttons and all kinds of wizardry to like hold the button and go i don't know like two-stepping what's that like a dance i i don't know i don't understand the digicals but steering is on seat is on most of this is welded together i'm probably going to run out of gas before i can finish so i got to just finish up this roll bar Next time we'll build the steering, get that done. I'm gonna roll this ahead, set this down and roll it ahead. I gotta finish up my rear axle. This is just tacked, I gotta mount this up permanently. Gotta build a drive shaft hoop to go over that. Some kind of shifter, brakes. Try to get all the mechanicals done. Maybe in the next video, try to get all that stuff buttoned up. And then it's gonna be on to putting the engine together, building a coolant pipe to hold the, there's no radiator, it's just gonna have like a stand pipe full of antifreeze with a radiator cap on top. We'll get that going. Oh, I gotta build headers, gotta build open headers for it. I got a rebuild kit for the carburetor coming. Drop the distributor in, time it, build the headers, and then I'll probably put the battery under the seat here because the seat is open, I can get to the battery terminals. Put the battery under the seat, run a cable up there. I'll have just a toggle switch and a momentary switch to start the thing off. Just turn the ignition on and hit the starter button to crank it off. Uh, no charging system, nothing, just run it off the battery. So we're really making some good progress. Hopefully in the next, let's date today, I've got literally four weeks to get this done and it, to the show, four weeks in a day. So I'm under the crunch, gonna lose a shop. We don't get it done, we'll lose a shop. So thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Building Death Trap Dragsters, it's got a roll bar, it's fine, here at the Quick Speed Shop. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment down below. Hit the like button, thumbs up, and we'll see you next time. Bam. I'm a professional. Don't try this at home.